And just like that, we're down to eight players remaining at this year's Women's French Open. It's going to be a fun tournament with the big four all still left in play. What's up, everybody? It's John Eric Poli here to do a little outlook of this year's women's quarterfinals. Like I said there in the introduction, it's going to be a fun one to watch here in the quarterfinals with a lot of big matchups here at play. And the best part is we have the big four all remaining with Iga Sviantec, Irena Sabalenka, Elena Rabankina, and Coco Goff, and a very good opportunity for all four of those ladies to advance. Let's get started with this little outlook by looking at the world number one, Iga Sviantec. She'll be taking on Marketa Vondrosova. Let's not forget Vondrosova, last year's Wimbledon champion. So a meeting between Grand Slam champions here. Going to be a fun matchup. And I think for this one, it's really just Iga versus the roof. When that roof's closed, it changes a lot. And we saw what happened when Iga took on Naomi Osaka. Iga's a little bit vulnerable when that roof closes. We even saw earlier uh, in this clay season at Germany, which was an indoor clay event, where she lost that event to Elena Rabanca. So that roof's closed. Things get a little interesting there. But still, at the end of the day, being on clay, I'm going to go with the queen of clay probably to advance here. You really got to like Iga's chances. After never saying die against Naomi Osaka, she bounces back in a big way. Just look at her round four matchup. What did it take? 40 minutes to get out of there? She's actually rolling right now and looking very good outside that little hiccup in that Naomi Osaka match, so expect Shiantek to definitely advance in this matchup. Now let's move on to who Iga would play if she does advances. Coco Goff versus Ans Jabur. I actually want to get started by talking about Ans Jabur here. If you guys have been following along on my channel, when I do my good, the bad, and the ugly videos as recaps throughout tournaments, Ans Jabur has been in that ugly category so many times this year, and I actually feel bad for putting Ans in that so much because Ans is such a great person and so nice and down-to-earth and a great representative of the sport. But it's been a rough 2024 for Ans Jabur. Glad to see her playing a lot better here in this year's French Open. Irregardless of what happens in this event, the fact that she's going to be in the final eight players remaining, very good showing for Ans Jabur, and I'm very happy for her. But now going against Coco Goff, going to be a tall task here for Ans Jabur. Goff's been rolling here in this year's French Open. Right, just look at look at her results so far here throughout this year's French Open. She hasn't even dropped a set yet. She's looking very good. She, and let's not forget too, she is a former finalist at a French Open event. Iga Swiatek beat her a few years ago in the championship here at Roland Garros. So good surface for Goff. You probably have to expect that Goff is going to advance in this matchup. Now let's go to the other half of things. We have Elena Rabankina taking on Jasmine Palanini. Just like we did with Ans Jabur, I got to give a little shout out here to Jasmine Palanini. Let's remember, right, in the last tournament at the WTA 1000 event, the Italian Open in Rome, uh, Palanini's home country. Palanini exits extremely early in that tournament. Very disappointed. Uh, very bad showing there. But she bounces back here. Final eight players here for Jasmine Palanini. But again, going to be a tall task here for her as well because Elena Rabankina. I mean, you want to talk about Iga Shiantek being the favorite, like like I was saying before her being the queen of clay and whatnot, but you could easily make the case that Rabankin is actually the favorite in this event right now. She's absolutely rolling. She's playing so good. She's playing so clean. She hasn't dropped a set. She really looks like a world beater right now. So again, you'd probably expect that Elena Rabankin would advance here, but still the match has to get played. We'll see how it all plays itself out there. And then that takes us to the last quarterfinal matchup here, which is going to be Irena Sabalenka, and she'll be taking on a very good feel-good story here in Mira Andreva. Uh, Andreva, at a young age of 17, looking very good here so far. I know it's a great feel-good story, but again, tall task here against Sabalenka. Sabalenka also hasn't dropped a set yet in this year's French Open. She's been playing very good here on clay. Let's not forget, too, she lost the finals of Madrid and the Italian Open to Iga Sviantec. She's playing very good here. And in round four, she did get a win over Emma Navarro. And let's remember, Navarro did beat Sabalenka earlier this year. So that was a huge response from Sabalenka, who's playing so great. So there you go. That's kind of a little breakdown and outlook here at this year's quarterfinals. And like I said, very, very, very likely we're going to have a big four semifinal. If that's the case, it's going to be really fun to watch. Now, obviously, we got to see how these quarterfinal matchups play out, but you got to like the chance of it happening. And irregardless, this quarterfinal matchups here, I mean, very good quarterfinal here. As tennis fans, we got to be really happy at the way this tournament's been playing out. It's been a lot of fun to watch and a lot of huge matchups still in play here. So, going to be a fun rest of the tournament to watch here on the women's side at Roland Garros.